So, once again, welcome. Um, a last time, please don't clutter up the aisle. You there, particularly don't sit there. We'll get in large trouble with the fire department, so we definitely don't want this. There's still empty seats back there. Do you see them? Just please take them. So, um, if you're like me, you had some bad days this year when all the Fedora and Suse and Novell guys picked on you for always propagating Debian. Now, uh, the background of all that happens will now be presented by Luciano and Maximiliano, who came over from Argentina, particularly, to talk to you. So, give them a warm welcome. Uh, hi, I'm Maximiliano, he's Luciano. Uh, well, we're going to talk about the bug in op Debian's OpenSSL. Uh, okay, I guess everybody knows uh, what a PRNG is, but for those who don't, it's a predictable random number generator, okay? Uh, okay, then uh, I'll start talking uh, with a brief introduction. Um, uh, when what this bug was introduced in OpenSSL and what the consequences were. And then Luciano will show a live demo with some exploitation techniques. And maybe even how to conquer the universe. Uh, so, um, this, uh, this bug which affected uh, OpenSSL, the random number generator, uh, was introduced uh, two years ago uh, due to a Debian specific patch. So it's a Debian specific bug um, and remained uh, undiscovered for uh, two years, Ex almost exactly two years until Luciano discovered this. Um, and it was published on May of uh, 2008. Um, it, uh, this bug affects um, the, the underlying library of OpenSSL, which is libssl, um, uh, and every, every package, every program which links against this library. Uh, it uh, not only affects Debian, but uh, any other distribution which um, relies on Debian, such as Ubuntu, for example. Um, the, um, the consequence, the main consequence is that uh, any cryptographic material may uh, become guessable very easily, very easily. Um, so, uh, as a, when we, we need a random, a random uh, number, uh, we can see uh, the output, the random output as a random st a stream, and uh, if, we, if we want to to guess what the next output will be. Uh, we, in this case, we uh, just need to know uh, very, low, uh, very low information. In this case, uh, the entropy, is the key space, is reduced to just 15, bi uh, byte, to 15 bits. Um, and it also, uh, the random output also depends on the architecture and endianness, whether it is 32 or 64 bits, and little or big endian, and of course in the internal state of the generator. Um, and well, okay, uh, as a consequence, the result is that any cryptographic material is visible. You can see in this, uh, for example, all these uh, cryptographic schemes. They all may be, uh, or in fact, they are affected. Here are some of the affected packages. For example, OpenSSH, OpenVPN, uh, Tor, um, Firefox, for example, or any, it's not, in, it's not included, uh, it's not affected because it uses its own uh, crypto, crypto suit. Well, how uh, this bug was introduced uh, two years ago? 
It all started when a Debian user submitted a, a bug to the Debian bug tracking system, uh, which uh, where uh, he was complaining about some uninitialized uh, uh, variables, which were, uh, he was getting a lot of warnings when debugging his own programs, which linked with uh, libssl, and using, he was using a debugger uh, called uh, Bygreen. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see uh, what he was uh, complaining about. Thank you. Hola. Uh, hello. 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 Um, here we have a small program. Uh, it just gets a number of bytes, of random bytes from OpenSSL in, into the buffer and then prints it on the screen. It links with uh, open SSL library. Now we run it. And we get a uh, random output every time we run it. Okay. What we want to see is what happened uh, two years ago when the bug was discovered, the, this, this bug. So what uh, we're gonna do, sorry. We are linking against the original uh, SSL library and running the, this program, this little program, with the debugger, which is Fibrin. It So it uh, it checks for an, uh, an initialized memory, and we can see a lot of warnings, almost 100 errors. So uh, this, uh, r let's remember that it was just in a very, very small program. There are no uh, and initialize variables here, so the problem is inside lies inside the OpenSSL library. Yes. So the card, the Debian maintainer, um, he take, uh, he identified, he analyzed the source code, and identified two problematic lines, which are those at line 274 and 467 which are sy syntactically uh, identical, but of course they're in different contexts, they're in, uh, in different functions. Uh, what these lines are doing is adding uh, some amount of entropy into the random number generator state. Um, take a look at the second line, which is enclosed by, by this um, conditional compila uh, compilation macro, uh, which is related to purify, which is uh, another debugger which resembles uh, very closely to Bygreen. So we, uh, this line uh, may get compiled or not depending on the compilation flags. And uh, well, why, uh, why th uh, was that happening? Because um, an initialized uh, variables may be a good, may be a, a source, some kind of source of uh, entropy for the uh, uh, random number generator state. But uh, it's a very weak uh, source of entropy. There are a lot better uh, alternatives as a source of entropy, as uh, entropy seeds. Okay, so um, the Debian maintainer proposed a number of uh, solutions to this problem, uh, the first one being just not uh, ig ignoring the, this problem, but it was affecting any pack any program which linked with lib SSL, so it wasn't a good solution. Uh, another solution uh, was uh, would also be to ignore it, uh, let uh, telling Bygreen uh, just to ignore it, but it was the, it was the same problem. The um, if you used another debugger, the complaints would, the warnings would still be there. So the, another solution uh, would be just uh, don't add this, uh, this buffer, this uninitialized variables into the, the random number generator, 
as the, they don't add any significant entropy. They, uh, they didn't add any quality to the uh, random output. So, uh, well, he decided to ask to the upstream to open SSL developers by mail, where he, uh, he showed, he explained the, the problem and asked uh, what would be the consequences if he commented those lines. And, well, the Debian developers said not much. If it helps, uh, we're in favor of removing. If it helps in with the buying. So this uh, here start, starts the misunderstanding because finally those, those two lines were commented out and the patch was submitted to the official Debian package. The, uh, this, screen, this screenshot comes from the, um, from the Debian uh, changelog on the web. S uh, and so the, we have a look what happened when we, when the patch was submitted. Thank you. We're uh, running the program again with Vibrin, but this time with the patch version of OpenSSL. They patched. It's uh, there are no more, no more errors. Um, the program output just uh, looks random, so we are happy. Everything is fine. Okay. Well, what happened uh, is uh, when when the program, such as the demo, uh, wants to get some random bytes from OpenSSL, uh, it calls the this function run byte and uses a buffer. As input and output, <laughs> uh, uh, the input uh, when we are using it as input, as we just saw, uh, it takes the it reads its content and adds that to the entropy of the random generator. But uh, it's b it's a very low quality entropy, so uh, it's negligible. Um, the when, but when a process uh, just re uh, started, um, uh, it just it just the first for the first time it needs to be initialized. It calls uh, those that other function, uh, which gets uh, in which initializes the random generator state from many different sources of entropy. Uh, the most uh, important one and the most the strongest one being the system random device. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when we apply this patch, uh, what uh, the second when the second line is comment, uh, commented, the second one, which was enclosed in the macro conditional uh, compilation, uh, this, uh, this input is, uh, is erased, but as it added a negligible uh, um, amount of entropy, it, it, does, it's, uh, it doesn't matter, it's okay. The problem is the first line, which ended up uh, re reducing the entropy to just this uh, to this source which is the process ID and that gives us uh, 15 bits only 15 bits of entropy so um, let's take a look
There, there it is. Uh, we're going uh, to run the program again, but this time we have a fixed uh, process ID. We are hijacking the get pid function. Um, let's see what happened. We get. Okay, so that's the the result. Okay, who is this? Maybe it's here. <coughs> so uh, we, uh, you may be wondering why the, the that first line, which is so important, got uh, commented. Um, it just happens that uh, that function, run that function, is uh, sometimes called directly. Um, for example, in the re um, OpenSSL package reg regression tests, um, and for example, in this in this function, which belongs to the OpenSSL uh, API, run, um, this function lo loads entropy from a file, and it may happen that the the content of the length of the file is shorter than the buffer but then the the whole content of the buffer is spread into the the entropy state and then there we get uh, an, uh, the same warning um well that uh, with uh, commenting out this line it it was all fixed hmm? okay it's fixed so uh, I leave you with Luciano. Hola, hola. Oh, yeah. Ein Spice Drei. One, two, three. <laughs> My German sucks. Okay, let's go how to how we can explode this. As a summarize, that's the situation. We have a random number generator where we can. Uh, know all the possible outputs of that random number generator. So let's see what can we do with that situation. Yes? The first, the first scenario is with authentication. Uh, probably was the, the first one was proposed by H.D. Uh, Moore. It's quite obvious, but... So many of you probably are familiar with uh, challenge authentication or powerless authentication. How many of you are familiar with these concepts? Cool. So that's... So, you know, a, a, a cryptographic pair of key, you export the, the, the public key, and the magic happens. You know the magic. So, let's continue. Let's suppose for a moment that this pair of key was generated by a vulnerable Debian. Yes? In that case, let's include our evil part. You know, the real hackers use console, so that's why <laughs> key interface. This hacker has problems with small interface, so... so <laughs> Big fonts for him. So the, <laughs> the, the, that's evil part. Uh, suppose that this part creates this pair of key uh, in, a, in a secure way. He knows the architecture. Uh, so he runs the vulnerable PRNG uh, generator to create all the possibilities for all the two power 15s uh, options of the key pair generator. Those PKR is generated by random, so everything goes well. So we start trying to brute forcing, and in one moment, they're gonna get the exactly clone of this option. So in this case, the server will grant the access because the evil part has uh, the private key. Please notice that this part is not a Debian. The Debian is here, but this part trusts in the Debian weak cryptography, yes? So uh, this, this server gets a security hole just by trusting on an Ubuntu or any Debian or something like that, yes? Let's do a demo of here. Uh, I'm really, really, really bad with shell scripting, 
So I asked to my, I asked to my mom to help me. Uh, let's first start off at the beginning. Um, here, uh, I have all the RSA keys for this length uh, for SSH, for example. Yes? Okay, I give enter, so I need to wait now. This is a quite a big directory because it has all the key pairs for all the uh, PITS files, so it takes along to list it. And my machine is, oh, there it is. Yes, as you can see, there are two pairs. The public key and the private part was generated with this PID. This means that the process ID used for generate this pair was this one, and this is just the fingerprint. Yep. This, uh, this amount of uh, keys was generated by HD Moore, but you can generate by yourself. I mean, it's not really hard. So, my mom do this script. <laughs> you know, uh, he chose a host, a random host. I don't know why that one. <laughs> he chose a user. She, she needs to, to, to know a user. I mean, you, you need to, to broadcast a user. Yeah, and ask for a, a password uh, less authentication. Yes. So she simply, uh, we, we, with each key, she tries to use it, yeah? And she prints it because she's a really polite woman, so she prints it on the screen. It's something nice. So, start to brute force, brute forcing. Uh, okay, maybe this can take a while, I don't know. Okay, I get worried. There it is. <laughs> Should I? <laughs> uh, oh my God. <laughs> The default answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you can see how, how brute force, how you can get access to, to, to a server. Of course, you need to know uh, uh, the username. So let's think about it. You, we need a user, which is a popular user, which is in all systems, which has, <laughs> which has really high privilege. OK, you choose. Uh, let's think about some countermeasures of, of this. Uh, the, big, the big problem here is that this is a not Debian server. So probably the, the administrator of this server is losing his time laughing of Debian users instead of patching his server. <laughs> so if you are a, a, Debian, a, a server administrator, you need to look if your server uh, has weak public keys. Of course, if you have an anti-brute force uh, script, uh, that helps really good. But you, you need to remove all your public keys, or your weak public keys. Yeah? Debian provides few scripts for do that, but you can do your own script. It's quite easy. You, that's public blacklisted with this information, so you can do that. If you are a Debian, uh, a Debian administrator of this kind of server, you can... Um, you can, uh, Debian includes a new option to a SSH daemon who just avoid the blacklisted uh, authentications. Yes? So that was a, a Debian specific patch to include this new option. Yes? You know, Debian specific patch sometimes are good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's go to the, to the next scenario, man in the middle. This, this, this attack was really easy. I mean, do you have any question about authentication? Yes, please. Can you have? Please choose that one. Yes? Does the user ID that you're attacking have to have set up a um, key pair, or can you actually be attacking a user who set up to use password-only authentication? Well, if, if they're using password, they are not using asymmetric cryptography, so there is no random involved. But you can do a man-in-the-middle attack. So because the, you, you get sure that the other part is really the other part because you are using asymmetric cryptography. 
So let's see how how can you use money in the middle. Yes. Well, uh, probably most of you are uh, familiar with certificates. How many of you are familiar with certificates? <laughs> let's avoid this. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, the machines are really polite, so they say hello. The certificates answer with a, with a certificate, which is a public key signed. The, server, the client just examine the certificate, looking for something. Uh, let's leave this part. And the client uh, challenge the server in order to be sure that this part is correctly. Yes, the server has the, is the only owner of the private part, so uh, the client can be sure that the server is, I don't know, Deutsche Bank, for example. Yes, so let's introduce the evil part again. Um, the evil part gets a certificate, I mean it's public, he can, he can get it. And let's suppose that this certificate was generated in a weak way. Yes. So the public, the public part, uh, it's part of a guessable uh, key pair. So the evil part uh, tries to find a clone in the exactly way that the other, the other attack, extract, uh, get a clone of the private key, and the client, let's suppose that's, that the evil part has a way to redirect all the traffic to him, and the client will challenge the evil part. The, the evil part can answer the challenge because he has the private key. So, the heavy part here is how you redirect the traffic. Okay. Let's see this way. You need to share a LAN with this, with this client. I don't know. Nobody used wireless connection in 21 century, so it's hard to do. Uh, you, you, you can poison DNS. You know it's something really hard to do. Maybe you can ask to Kaminsky how to do that, but it's really, really hard. So this, this kind of attack is it's quite funny. In fact, this kind of attack uh, provoke, um, um, provoke a problem in OpenID infrastructure because the OpenID infrastructure works with SSL and most of those servers have weak certificates. So you can uh, bypass OpenID authentication with this kind of attack, combining this and the Kaminsky poisoning. Yes? So we have a, a, a money in the middle scenario. Uh, high sec dot d, highsec, my pronunciation is quite bad, so sorry. Highsec dot d, make a survey, survey, survey uh, of, um, of servers who are vulnerable to this man in the middle attack. So they get just 100,000 servers who only 5% run HTTPS. Yes? Of course, the, ni uh, five, the 95 uh, rest are vulnerable to man in the middle per se, so it's not a big deal. From this 5%, they took only the sign it by a certificate authority, recognized certificate authority, because the self-signed certificates are vulnerable to man in the middle per se. From this portion, the 3% are weak certificates because they have been building in a vulnerable Debian or derivative. Yes? So from the beginning, from the 200,000, only uh, 142 uh, are vulnerable to this problem. But if we extrapolate this problem with the numbers from Netcraft, in this moment there are 24,000 weak certificates out there. It's quite an amazing number. Yes? So the problem here is that nobody no browsers checks for re revocation. No, nobody checks for revocation. Well, not nobody. There is one browser who checks for revocation. Do you know which one? Internet Explorer in Windows Vista. So, if you are a Windows Vista user, you don't have this problem. You have some other problems, <laughs> <laughs> but not this one. Uh, let's, uh, there are some ways to mitigate this. Uh, hostels were? I don't know if I have connection to the internet. Ah, here? Everywhere here is. 
Looking up, looking up, looking up. I'm using the cable. Oh, it's not plugging it. Yet. <laughs> oh. It's playing now? No, it's not playing. Okay, Houston, Houston. I want my connection. Ah, an AP. Thanks, God. Okay, let's choose a city here. Uh, first, a country: Germany, Georgia, Germany. Then choose a city: Berlin, Berlin here. I know I, I'm not from here, so I want to rent rent a. Few. We are two, so two guests. So, okay, this is quite slow. Okay, let's book this one. San Christopher's Berlin. It's good. Oh, cool. Book. Okay, here's the problem. The certificate to pay in this page, it's uh, on the blacklist. I'm using a blacklist plugin to detect this. Yes? Of course, it's not enough with uh, the, the plugin by itself checks the check if the certificate is blacklisted or not by a DNS query. But if you are in a management situation, you can spoof the, the DNS queries, so you need to download all the base with all the blacklisted, which is a plugin with 30 megabytes, which is quite heavy. But you know, Firefox is heavy by per se, so. <laughs> uh, another problem who has this plugin is that the text that the, the certificate is weak, but first send information. So <laughs> you first send information, and then you have the, 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 the warning. So you, <laughs> you have a really big problem, but in some cases, works, like in this one. Yes, it, this is one, one option for mitigate this. Let's go to, to, to uh, the other attack, the Diffie-Hellman. You know TH is Diffie-Hellman. How many of you are familiar with Diffie-Hellman? Okay, Some, s, s, there are less hands up, but okay. This is Diffie-Hellman. <laughs> Another question. How many of you are familiar with ephemeral Diffie-Hellman? Ephemeral Diffie-Hellman, or Diffie-Hellman ephemeral, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, well, it's quite easy. You know, Diffie-Hellman, you know, the private exponent, which is an X, which was getting by random. P is a prime, G is a generator, Phil, Galois, Sarasa. Um, the magic happens, and you have a shared secret, K. Okay. Yes? In a ephemeral Diffie-Hellman, after the handshaking, you just discard the private exponent. That's all. You know, now you know ephemeral Diffie-Hellman. <laughs> so, wh why, why this happen? Because ephemeral Diffie-Hellman provides something called perfect forward secrecy. Yes? In this case, there is no information in both parts to regenerate the shared secret. Okay? Because you discard this part. But, probably you are seeing the problem, this part is generated by random. So, if one of the part is running a vulnerable, a weak, random uh, generator, you can recalculate the shared secret and break perfect forward secrecy. Yes, sounds cool. Okay, let's see if this works. You need to do this. You need to create all the possible X, and, and if that X, uh, we, if you, with that X, you get the private part of the client, that means that the client was running a weak generator. So you can recalculate K. If with that X generates the public part of the server, that means that the server was running a uh, weak generator, so you can recalculate uh, the shared secret. With the shared secret, you can decipher all the text. Yeah? Let's see an example here. 
I'm running Warshak here. You know Warshak? Yeah, ah, thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna run this. Ah. It's a WV get of this page, which is secure. And uh, we are not checking about the certificate. Um, we are running the, the broken OpenSSL. Yes, because my OpenSSL is patched. Helpful. Uh, and we are running it with a fixed fix speed. Yes, this part is optional. This part is optional, but I want to be sure that doesn't take too much long. So I fix an, a, a process ID. Yes. So run it. And I have the pickup here. Yeah. Let's stop this. And you, as you can see, it's ciphered. Looks ciphered. Um, if we want to, to decipher it, we can't. We, uh, with some contributions of Paolo, which is an Italian guy who, who codes a few parts in Wireshack, we made a patch for Wireshack and we include these options. This so we can give here. <laughs> we can give here all the possible X. Yeah, I generate all the possible X. You can see them here. Work out. Do you know how many lines are here? Yes, With all the possible, all the possible bits. And let's put, okay. Now it's brute forcing. It looks like hang, but it's brute forcing. The new version has a quite progress bar, but <laughs> <laughs> in this way it's funnier. So, so let's try to decipher it now. And with the share sticker, we can decipher the connection. Okay, <laughs> that's always a problem, no? <laughs> we have some few problems here. As Maxi says, Firefox and most of the, of the browsers like Conqueror or Galeon is not affected by this problem uh, because they are using their own Cypher suite. So we need to break the other part. Or maybe if you are, uh, I don't know, if you, are, if you used to uh, use the web with wbget, in this case, you are vulnerable, but nobody, nobody surf on the web with wget. But so we need to, to attack the Apache part. Yes, the problem with the Apache part is that first the Apache forks and then they generate the diffie hellman case change. So the internal state of the PRNG change in each connection. So you need to, 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 to capture all the connection from the begin of an SSH, of an open S a, op a, a Apache startup. Yes, you do this, the same of this with SSH connections too. Okay, cool. Um, so you can you can uh, decipher SSH connections too, not with the Wireshark plugin, but you can. That's some other tools. Yes. Um, so you need to be a really powerful attacker if you want to decipher Apache connections. But you need to get all the, all, your, all the connections between the startup until the, the, the finish. But some powerful uh, attackers can do that, like ISP, Internet Service Provider, has all the information, NSA too, so <laughs> you have a problem. So, Le this last attack is related with digital signature algorithm. Probably, how many of you are familiar with digital signature algorithm? Okay. The, 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 I, I am running out of time, so let's go to the, to the main part. The problem here is that even if the, care, if the pair of keys was generated in a secure server, if you sign just one message in an unsecure host, your private key is compromised. Yes, you see my point? You have the math here, but the, the idea is there. If you, if you, if you pair, it's a strong, but you sign one message in a, in a, in a weak server or in a weak machine, your, your private part is 
calculable can be calcul calculated. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Yes, I will. <laughs> okay. So let's go on this. Yes? So the promise part, how to conquer the world. Oh, how to conquer the universe. You know, Debian is the universal operating system, so we, need, we, 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 we are in conditions to conquer the universe. Yes? You need to choose an application. You need to see which algorithm it's using. We need to generate all the space, all the possible space, which is 2 power 15 minus 1, because OpenSSL never runs as in it, so minus 1. And times 3, because there is free combination between uh, endianness and bitness. Yeah? So uh, times 3. And then let's brute force. Yeah? We can brute force uh, authentication system. We can uh, make a man in the middle attack. We can decipher connections with a vulnerable pair. Uh, we can attack symmetric connections, uh, uh, symmetric encrypted connection of storage. For example, PWB, uh, this, quite, this little program to generate password, uh, PWB safe. I don't know if you are familiar with it. You run PWB safe and you get many nice passwords to just scrape or something like that. Well, if that, if that password was generated two years ago, they can be guessable easily because they use the random number generator. So it looks nice password, but it's not a nice password. And of course, we can uh, break DSA. Yes? The last point is uh, enjoy your power. <laughs> OK. Related work here. This is the bug uh, in OpenID, which I, which I told you. Uh, this is where you can download the, the Firefox plugin. There's, there are some tools uh, for SSH. For example, in this place here, you have SSH, um, SSH tool to decipher cell connection or these kind of things. Uh, the last point here is the wiki of Debian, where you can find how to regenerate the keys in all the packages affected. Yes? So, some control measures. Of course, if you're a Debian user, you need to upgrade as soon as possible. If you didn't do that, you are fucking up now. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, you need to do that. So uh, uh, update LibSSL, OpenSSL, OpenSSH. Uh, if you are, uh, you need to look for your compromise keys. For example, in my case, I need to contact all my, my employees because I leave my keys there. So I need to, 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 to tell them that now it's insecure. Uh, the problem is that if you leave a public key of you in a server and somebody exploit that, the username will be you. So <laughs> you, that you are in a big, really big problem. Uh, even if you are not a, a Debian user, you need to eliminate all blacklisted public key from your servers on your machines. If you use your uh, DSA key in an affected machine, you, your DSA key doesn't work anymore, you need to, to revoke that. Okay, this plugin can mitigate man in the middle uh, cases. And if you are a Debian user, um, if you are a Debian user of an OpenSSH server, you have a new options here just for avoid blacklisted, uh, blacklisted uh, keys. Of course, if you transfer your, pub, uh, your private GPG key through an insecure uh, link, uh, for example, an insecure SSH channel, your PGP key is compromised. So you need to, 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 to revoke that key too. If you transfer your, your political affair, you need to change your political affair. And if you transfer your sexual uh, uh, likes, you need to change your sexual likes. <laughs> so as a conclusion, we're finished, we're finished. Um, of course, the first one is the obvious one. Algorithms can, uh, can be strong, but implementation can be wrong. When, when, you, when you work with cryptography, it's quite annoying because you need to know a lot of mathematician issues, and maybe you, you get the way to factorize some kind of numbers in a really tricky way. But in most of the case, the developers miss. I am making this noise? Hello? Um, simple patches have deep, simple consequence. Even if those lines look like equals, 
uh, have different effects. Ask with details when you, you ask an analyst, please ask with details is, uh, in order to, to avoid misunderstandings. Uh, please don't write fancy code, especially if the contribution is minimal. Don't include initialization memory because initialization memory is not a good source of entropy. Yes, please. Um, if many people ask you about something, maybe it's important. <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is, if you need to make a frequency asking question, why Bilgrin, it's complain about initialization memory, maybe you should remove the initialization memory. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. This is the open SSL fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Another issue here is, if this is an example of a counterexample of the Linux law. You know the Linux law? How many of you knows the Linux law? Oh, okay. The Linux law is giving enough eyeball, all the bugs are shallow. I said okay? Okay, the problem here is we, we as an activist of free software, many times use this as an argument. Said, okay, the free software is secure because everybody can see the code, so all the bugs are shallow. But the problem was there in the web, in the public web, for two years and nobody see it, and nobody saw it. So maybe the problem is not that many people see it. We need, we need a persons who see the code with criticized eye. We, we, we need experts seeing the code. And this is something heavy to find. Free software is good. I'm a really fan of free software. I'm a Debian developer. But sometimes it's not enough with free software. We need hands, we need eyes to review our code again and again. So, that's all for you. Please, if you have questions, wait for the mic. <laughs> See? <laughs> Thank you for these people. You have a question there? No. It's not a question. It was just a <laughs> Another question? <laughs> There's no question. We have a question here. <laughs> so, um, what about if I secured my private key with a password? Well, it's not a problem because your private key is secured by a passphrase. But the clone is not. <laughs> That's right. <what I> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Another question? So, thank you for, for being here. Oh, no, Jeff, sorry. I uh, uh, stop it. I, I still have a question. Is that that? Yeah, right. Now there's my. Uh, oh, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, do we have any, uh, any, any idea how many machines were actually exploited? Well, uh, I have no numbers, and the Debian security team has no number neither. I have a problem here? Okay. And the Debian security team has no uh, numbers neither. Nobody reports uh, an, an, an intrusion, uh, but probably there was. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Maybe uh, from, from HoneyNet, so anything other? I haven't yet seen any exploits that seem to try to, or attacks that seem to try to exploit oh. these bugs. Well, I, I, I ha my machine is full of locks with people trying to brute force it. So, <laughs> yes. So it's... I mean, really with, uh, with the uh, yeah. Debian keys. Yeah, yes, oh. yes. Trying and trying. Yes. I have a question there. Uh, are you talking about the uh, phalanx to rootkit and the SSH attacks? Well, yes. Summer? We we contact the cert. In fact, was a was a, a, a German cert who who report this. Uh, the problem was there. He, the cert published that they detected brute forcing in many machines. Uh, and then slash dot says, okay, probably some people are trying to break with a Debian problem. But when we contact the cert, they said that we don't have any evidence that they are using this vulnerability, which has detected brute force in attempts. But they are not sure even if they are using this vulnerability. So uh, probably there was a media 
uh, invention, but we are not sure. So I think that's answer your question. Cool. So let's thank our speakers once again. Thank you.